Good evening, welcome to NUFC Matters with me, Steve Wraith. It is the Super Mac and Gibble Show. Good evening, lads. How are you Steve, doing, Steve. kids? Hi, John. Good Hi, to mate. see you. And I thought I thought this week we'll 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 change tax. We'll just talk about cricket and golf, lads. Oh well, well I'm yeah, go- I'm going in that case. Yeah. I'm going. <laughs> I mean, I'll just stick my head out the window and talk about Newcastle there, the way I feel. Uh, the <laughs> of course, I'm not going to talk about cricket and golf, lads. Uh, it's a football only show for an hour. And delighted to see you guys, uh, as always, as I know the, uh, the, the punters are as well. Everybody uh, chomping at the bit for a bit of Super Mac and Gibble. So here we go. Um, wow, uh, that was the week that was, Malcolm. I mean, you know, four games we've had, um, you know, just over four games. We had the Brentford game, of course. We had uh, the wonderful trip to the San Siro with a, uh, a, credible, a credible nil-nil. We then had the uh, uh, another amazing win at the weekend against Sheffield United. Nobody in their right mind would have predicted 8-0. Uh, and then we have a Carabao Cup game, which we're all cursing my luck that we've drawn the treble winners at home. Um, and we win 1-0. I mean, it's, it's you know, all the doom and gloom merchants have uh, gone back under the stone for now. Um, what's what's changed, Malcolm? What's, what's happened? Well, I think maybe some of what we saw last night might answer your question, Steve. What's changed is the way that uh, uh, Eddie Howe is, has improved players beyond recognition. Uh, for example, Lascelles last night looked absolutely terrific, whereas under Steve Bruce, uh, he looked as if he was on his last legs um, and, 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 and was struggling to play. Um, and the, the change is, is absolutely dramatic. Um, I, I, it was a, it made so many changes, and yet they came out. And okay, the first half it, it was difficult to get the ball off Man City, but Man City really achieved very, very little. They had a they had a couple of shots in the whole game. One in the first half that he that uh, Pope saved with his with his right foot. Um, and then uh, I, uh, Grealish, I think it was, in the second half, hit a, a, a right-footed curler straight into um, into Pope's midriff. And that was the sum total for all the possession that Manchester City had. Um, they, they, they couldn't break down the Newcastle back line. Um, and I thought they were absolutely tremendous. Um, uh, and and when you think that the, that there were players there, well, some making their debut. There were three debutants last night, which is incredible to take on the European champions. And and I, and people are saying, oh yeah, but it's their second team. The the thing with Manchester City is let's not forget that what Pep Guardiola has built over the years that he's been the manager of Manchester City is two almost comparable teams and Newcastle United reserves just about took on one of those two uh, um, teams uh, and and believe me Pep Guardiola he'd be quite happy to put that team out um, in, in a Champions League match of that I'm fairly sure and Newcastle United reserves took them on Okay, had very little possession. I think Newcastle had about 30% to, to Manchester City's 70% in the first half. Um, but uh, but they just stayed absolutely solid at the back. They stayed organised. Um, they didn't go chasing. They just played a very, very sensible game. And then uh, into the second half, Newcastle started to, um, well, up and I think running riot would, 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 would be a, a gross exaggeration, but they certainly started to take control of the game. A couple of um, substitutions, which um, which certainly got Newcastle stirred and, and going and, and getting forward. Um, when Isaac came on, um, Bruno um, also. And uh, I... I, I and I was 
and I, I, it wasn't just me, it was everybody around. Um, they were so excited, but watching the game itself, they were hushed because it was so enthralling. Um, and then, and then, of course, something would happen and, and, and cheers would break out. But uh, uh, um, in the end, I thought that Manchester City, they came out of the game second best. Despite that first half display, they were definitely second best. Newcastle, they deserved to win. They had far more shots at goal than Manchester City did. Um, I, when what Joe Linton did for that uh, for the Newcastle goal was absolutely fantastic. Way yeah. he took a big long and an absolute wonderful run. And and Isaac on the far post did well from what seemed a, a fairly narrow angle to um, to slot it in. Well done him, but well done to everybody else. There was a hundred million pound player on City's left wing in Grealish. And he was no threat whatsoever. I thought Liveramento was absolutely brilliant. Yeah, I think uh, ab absolutely, Malcolm. I mean, the interesting thing for me was when I first, you know, you do things in the run of time. And when I first got the team sheet an hour before the game, I thought it was a suicide note. Oh, yeah. Ten, chain, yeah. ten changes, only yeah. the goalkeeper in. Ten I mean, of course there's going to be changes. Man City made changes, but they've got a deeper squad than us. Mm. I expected mm. changes. We're making changes every game. But ten changes, that is a reserve side plus the goalkeeper. Yes. That is yeah. a reserve side. When we won 8-0, not one of the ten outfield players started. So I thought it was a suicide note when I got the team sheet. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I thought we've committed suicide. Now, to a certain extent, I honestly think early doors, we got out of jail with that side. Because as Malcolm said, we didn't have much possession. And why didn't we? I'll tell you why. Because I, the two kids that were withdrawn at halftime, uh, Miley and Hall, yeah. I've got no worries about them. Long term, they're going to be superstars without a question. But I question Eddie putting them together in the same midfield Me too. against the European champions. Mm. When when you put a kid in, and Malcolm knows better than me because he's the next player, but when you put a kid in, you've got to put... Uh, experienced players around them to help them and to, yes. to encourage them and to make them able to do the simple things they put two of them in together 17 and 18 together mm. against against manchester city so we weren't going to get a lot of the ball in midfield in the first half because it was just tonali of experience with these two guys Joe Linton further up. And so we got a little bit run. But in fairness to Eddie, I believe he saw that and said to himself, we, we can't live the second half the way we lived the first half and hope we'll go to penalties. We'll get If we keep the same team, we get caught. They win 1-0 or something of that nature. So what do you do? You take the two kids off who shouldn't have started in tandem and you put on two giant of men in the way Gordon and Brooke ways and it changed and you know what happened within a couple of minutes there was two blockbuster tackles can you remember them I mean the crowd were, were so mm. quiet first it uh, was so quiet in the first half I thought uh, I took a wrong turn and I was in a cemetery uh, at a funeral. <laughs> uh, and, and then these blockbuster tackles went in and the crowd said wow yes come on oh they loved them didn't they I, we've suddenly got we've suddenly got back the Newcastle United we looked in the first half were quite placid quite timid I thought mm. all of a sudden we were the team we know we are because we got them to win around them we rattled them uh, they thought they were comfortable first off will come out tippy tappy tippy tappy as Malcolm said they had produced nothing in the end but they were tippy tappy tippy tappy we'll win one nil two nil all of a sudden they're getting the backside stand and Pep is so agitated he gets a yellow card because mm. somebody kicked one of his players oh hey Joe Linton was physical well, naughty Joe don't do things oh, but he actually went across 
um, John into the Newcastle uh, technical area and berated Eddie Howe. That, that, and, and the mad dog. Yeah, he did. He did. Yeah, and that's he why got, he got booked. He was got, in the wrong so I mean, area. For me, for me, the things that stood out, I mean, Malcolm has mentioned uh, the right back. What a player he's going to become. Oh, what a player he, he is already. But we had a back four who were strangers to each other. That back four have never played together as a unit. Now, we had three clean sheets before that because we had a back four that is split with Trippier, Shaw, Botman and Byrne that have played absolutely regularly. Whenever Eddie has switched his team about, it's not been the back four, it's been the midfield or the mm -hmm. front three. He's always kept the goalie in the back four. All of a sudden, we've got a back four that probably had to be introduced to each other. I mean, we had a kid making his debut, 20, who turns out to be sensational. We've had the Lascelles, who used to be skipper and now can't get in the side. We had Dummett, who I'd forgot was still with the club. The last time I, the last time I saw him, Bordesia was riding a chariot. Did Livermento uh, bother to take Grealish out of his pocket and give him back to Guardiola? No, I think he took him home and he stuck him on the yeah. fireplace. Like, you know. <laughs> I mean, uh, the, in all three, uh, Livermento, uh, Lascelles and Dummett were absolutely first class. The yeah, I, I, I was really surprised at Dummett. Yes. Um, he, he just... There was a maturity to him that I haven't seen before, John, in the he way was... that he was going about his game. And and also, Lascelles, Lascelles just looks a completely different, not only player, but person to what he was prior to Eddie Howe. He seems to have changed completely. Uh, and, and I remember some of the rash things that he used to do. Oh, my word. I mean, um, and, it, and but he was just cool, calm, collected. Looked to um, the way that he played. I thought he was, he was terrific. Both, that both the centre halves did terrific. I want yeah. them. I want them to do it again. Of course, I don't want it to be a one-off. You, you know, you always yeah. think well, that yeah. was terrific. But I hope you keep that's the standard. May I also mention because we're thrown tributes around like confetti here because there's, there was so many to, to throw about. May I also mention, for me, to see Joe Linton come back, look the old Joe Linton, all his yes. problems with injuries that he's had recently, when he wasn't training, he's playing at the weekend, then he was on the treatment table all week and, and then playing at the weekend again. That catches up on you. He didn't he mm. didn't look the player. You can't do that. On the Saturday, he was below par. Then he gets yet another injury with Brazil, so he's forced to take a rest, have treatment, not play. He come out last night. We were told by Eddie, who gives away nothing, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> nothing. minus nothing, that we mightn't see him after the international break. And all of a sudden, he's running about like a, a moving Grey's Monument last night. Fabulous mm. to see. He was back to his aggressive, nasty, wonderful best who can also play. And by the way, the run on the goal that they yeah. made past all the defenders, muscling them out of the way and then rolling the ball across goal for Isaac was absolutely stupendous. What an asset he's, he is to have back. Whether he can play on Saturday two games in three days, haven't played the full 90 minutes. Yeah, it might yeah, be well, a matter yeah, of him yeah. just, just being on the, box, on, the, on the bench, Malcolm, and then starting against um, PSG. That might be the way Eddie does it. But just if we're going to pay compliments to Livermento and to Dummett and to Lascelles we've all, and to uh, Bruno and Gordon for changing the, the mm -hmm. pattern, mm -hmm. thing, we've also got to say... Didn't Joe Linton make a terrific comeback? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I fully agree um, on that. Uh, I really do. Uh, it, it, but it was just the back four just seemed so calm and and totally in control. And it didn't. You've got to remember, Malcolm, that he had. You've got to remember as well that while people may say, "Well, it wasn't the." Um, uh, 
the Manchester City first team in Haaland didn't play. Of course not. It certainly wasn't our first team because it was our reserve team. But I tell you, who did play for them? Grealish, who is yes. a hundred million pound England international, faced up Tino at right back, and Alvarez, who won the World Cup as a centre forward with Argentina, fronted up mm -hmm. it in La Celles. And we handled both of them exceptionally well. So it wasn't just a, a, a stroll in the park. What it was a World Cup winner and a hundred million yeah. England international, and and we did terrific. And in the end, although I felt we didn't do well first off, defence did, the, the the midfield and attack didn't, but we deserved to win in the end. There's absolutely once we rattled their cages at the start of the second half with blockbuster tackles and then scored a goal. All of a sudden, a few of them who thought they could have a cigar and stroll round uh, St James's Park and then go home with a one nil, suddenly didn't have discovered they didn't have much of an appetite for the fight at all. Uh, mm. There is a little knocking sound which we've had for the last few weeks, um, and I think from my my ears, I think it is coming from your end, uh, Mal. I don't know. Whether, have, you got, have you got something on your desk which is loose so that that rattles? Me? Or, no. Have you got a desk? Oh, John, have you got something at your end? Because it's coming no. through me left. It's coming through me left headphone. Oh, I, I can hear it all the time. Today, I haven't. You heard can it. hear it. You can hear I it. Can as hear well. it today. I can't. I can't hear it at all. Right. So, might be something at your. Uh, there, it's there going it now. Same. No. Yes. There it is. Is it, is it a chair? Is it a chair or something? No. I think <laughs> it's Malcolm's left knee. People think it's people, people, think it's, people think it's a woodpecker or something. It it sounds like it sounds like it it sounds like um I'm trying to think of what it sounds like. It's like something at a, like on a chair or something like a but it's going. It's you. You've just done it. That's it. No, but it's not me. <laughs> no, I've it. got nothing here. There at it all. is. There it is. Yes, absolutely. I haven't heard it. I haven't heard it before, but I've heard it now. I think I've heard it. I've heard it, but it seems to just it just. I kicks think in it's every a, then. I think it's a woodpecker trying to get at Pep's bonds. New, <laughs> new, fe new feature. Get, guess the mouse says Jules. It's like a click on a mouse. Well, nobody uses a mouse. Well, what, uh, what, what, what we've done, what the trouble's been, Steve, that we've missed dear old Malcolm's dog, the old Bow Wow, give him oh, a fifteen hour cent. So we've had to replace it with Woody Woodpecker. That's what it basically <laughs> is. <laughs> Sounds like most code machines they used to use in the war, says um, says Dick, and so does Mark. And Stephen says uh, it's most code. Greel is trying to get out of Tino's pocket. Um, <laughs> Uh, it's every time Mal speaks, says Mark. Uh, it's where's Wally? Who's who's Wally? Most could. Oh dear me! Yeah. Well, we'll find it at some point. We'll find out what it is. Um, okay, uh, we have got a few questions. Um, I'll stick with the game questions for now. Anything else? I'll go into the second half. Uh, okay. Gib Super Mac Gibbo, do uh, do any of you think that Dummett had uh, had that performance in him? And have him and Lascelles had the Eddie effect as they were class against the 300 million pound team. I think we have covered that, Ian. I'll come to your other question, which was after Tonali's perform, uh, no Tony's performance, Tino's performance. I think he meant Tino's performance. Yeah, no. Tino, not Tony. Performance. Could you see Trips or even Tino moving to left back as we need him on the pitch for me? I seen a lot of people yeah. having a. I seen a lot of people having a pop at Target, you know. And I thought Target did okay last night. Lewis he did it was, do all right last night. It was yes. difficult. It was a difficult game for everybody, but they all yeah. did well. Yeah, but uh, but Target lacks a bit of pace. Liveramento don't doesn't get caught, and uh, Trippier is just very very clever, much cleverer mm -hmm. than anybody else. Yeah. What I would, what I would do, uh, and I don't think for one moment Eddie will do it. I think Eddie will go back to his normal back four that he loves, which is uh, Trippier, Shaw, Botman, and Byrne. But I would go, and I think because I was talking to Malcolm earlier today, and Malcolm would certainly go. I'd keep Levermanko Le at right back and play Trippier at left back. It was good enough. It, Instead of Burn, it was good enough for England. Trippier yeah, was out John, left back for England. Yeah, John, when when you as a manager see that 90 minute debut that Liveramento had last night, how do you go and say to him, I'm not playing you Saturday, son? Absolutely. 
Absolutely. Now, it I, may be. I wouldn't dream of, of doing that to any player. If I see somebody so brilliant, I would walk into the dressing room and say, well, you're first on the team sheet for Saturday, son. The, the, the problems being, of course, and this is the answer, split him, the problems being that in the last couple of games before last night, Trippier was brilliant. Yes. I mean, Trippier was yes. sensational. So you've got That's two right. so you've got two sensational players, Malcolm, on the right. You've got no sensational player on the left yeah. because Byrne, bless him, whatever he is, he ain't sensational at left back. Yeah, but uh, uh, but he's also not a, a true left back. No, well the other two probably aren't, but the true fullbacks, Trippier and Livermanco, they're true fullbacks, and, yeah. and Byrne yeah, isn't they, true they understand the the fullback game. All they've got to do is just slightly. And they would, they would, they would, they would, what they would give us as well, whichever one of them swapped, and I think it ought to be Trippier because you keep yeah. the kid in the position where he's strongest. And sure. Trippier experience, just, intelligence, yes. Trippier recently played left back for England, for goodness sake. Yes, he did. And, yes, he and did. I can't see Byrne ever playing left back for England. Um, <laughs> so, so, you know, Trippier's got to have the edge. And mm. what Trippier would give us at left back, is a more attacking threat than Dan gives us because Dan isn't the most comfortable carrier of the ball and visionary going forward. His no, and, and, and John, in, as you say that, I just thought, well, if the same applies to target. Yes, absolutely. He's, I he's mean, not comfortable crossing the halfway line. I haven't, I haven't even brought him into the conversation there, Malcolm, yeah. about who should be left back sure. against Burnley. Against Burnley, I think that if Burnley's recovered from his illness, Eddie will stick with him. I wouldn't, bless him. I would, make, I would move Trippier to left back and keep uh, Livermento in the side, and the usual two centre halves, of course. And um, but the kid was so good. Last night, as Malcolm says, you know, all right, he was told when he joined us it'll be next season or before, you know, yeah, he has the air apparent for Trippier, but we've still got enough games. No doubt he'll play at Manchester United. You've still got enough games to get some games, uh, to get some appearances in. But quite now, I feel Livermento and Trippier would be an upgrade on Dan playing left back because it's not his natural position. He's yes. a, he's the centre half. Yeah, yeah. I, I I would tend to agree, John. I, and and oh, I, I'll say it again that when you see such a fantastic performance as Livermento put in against a hundred million pound um, player, uh, absolutely, who is in the England side for heaven's sake, um, and he. And he literally just put him in his pocket. Um, what's been what's been heartwarming about him is in a just you've got, to, you've got to let him continue. Dude, I'm just thinking of it because you were saying how Livermanco played <coughs> against Grealish. When we went to AC Milan and got a terrific result, Trippier against the Portuguese outside yes. this, who was yeah. a well beater who was going to rip us apart. And Trippier put him in his back pocket. I yes, tell you what, did. those back pockets on the right backs are, are something, aren't they? Mm -hmm. One's got a Portuguese superstar in it, and the other one's got Grealish in it. So <laughs> if, if if they're both that good, why not play them both on Saturday? Yeah, yes. I and mean, as you because, say... I mean, all I would say to Eddie... Trippier, he played left back for England. Well, that's what I was going to say. very well. I was going to say, Eddie, have a little word with Gareth. Because either Gareth got it hopelessly wrong picking Trippier at left back, or Trippier can actually play left back. I'm mm -hmm. not suggesting for the rest of his career Trippier played left back. I'm talking about Burnley. And while we wait for the situation, and while we wait for Hall to come up to a little bit of speed, who is a left back and take over at left back, we've got to do horses for courses. We can only look at what's in front of us now. And what's in front of us is Burnley. And I would play both of them, and I'm certain Malcolm would. We don't want to bring horses into it. We've got a woodpecker, and it sounds like a duck now as well. Mark Byers is asking for cows to moo. It's like old McDonald's farm on this podcast tonight, doesn't it? Well, it, it is old McDonald's. 
we've got one more. Uh, we've got one more question for, from last night's game. Where do we go? Um, okay, Lewis Miley. Mike Stewart says one thing that bothers me from last night is Lewis Miley. I hope his confidence isn't negatively affected. I thought forty-five minutes. He, listen, he got he got forty-five minutes under his belt against the treble winners, Mal, in a game at St James's Park, which was almost a full house, fifty-one and a half thousand there. Lewis Miley will have got so much from that last night. Seventy yes, years of age. Yeah, no, uh, uh, it, it was a it was it, it was a severely tough test for everybody in that first half, and I think that it, that everybody came through it really well. But there are those that that could play better and will play better. But it was it, but it was a a, a, a blooding that was a, a very very difficult one. A there was a lot of youngsters making their debuts last night. That's that's always a, a it, 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 it's a very difficult situation that to actually play in. Um, and as John has just pointed out, that we were playing the European champions, who yeah. won other trophies as well. And so, I mean, I... and and so if if they didn't shine, you've still got to say, well done, you did really well. Because as a group, we stopped Manchester City scoring. I mean, and I, I, scored I, ourselves I, I've, got, I've got no worry about Hall and Miley whatsoever, which is because I think they're going to be supreme players, which is why I feel quite easy to chat about the situation last night, because it's not where you're going to ruin anybody's career because there's no way you can ruin these guys career because their careers are going to be huge but i felt it was a tad unfair to put them in the same area of the field last night to put one of them in to put miley in and, and mm. surround them by tonali and bruno from the kickoff or put hall in and give them tonali and bruno and is, is a different kettle of fish. Put two of them in together who have not played in the Newcastle first team from the start at all and who are very tender on age is asking an awful lot of them. And yes, they did fine, but they will have better nights and they'll have easier opposition and they'll have more support when the next in the team of senior players, I mean. Uh, but there's no good pretending because in my eyes, if we hadn't made the changes of bringing on Bruno and Gordon at half time, we wouldn't be in the next round of the cup. And they might have been, even if it was on penalties. I think the change in personnel changed again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, oh. I, I think you're right, John. Um, uh, uh, but that's not to denigrate. Not at all. And you wouldn't do that with two kids. You wouldn't no, do that. And wouldn't. The reason I feel okay in saying that is because we've got a couple of young superstars on our hands. Yeah. These oh, players yeah. are going to be quality. Yeah, that, they are oh. going to get better and better. And oh. they will get better for the experience of last night. They and, will have and, 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 and of course... I mean, Miley's 17, for goodness sake. What's yeah. he going to be eventually? Yeah. And, in fairness... When Hall gets in our side, and he'll be a terrific player for us, he'll be a left back. He didn't play left back last night. Mm -hmm. Target played left back. Oh, that's, yeah. Yes, that's right. He pushed yeah. forward because he's good on the ball. Mm -hmm. But he was actually, if you want to be harsh, not on the lad, but on Eddie, he was asking an 18 year old to make his debut in what is not his favorite position. Yes, yes, absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Also, John, who was the last 17-year-old to play for Newcastle? Oh, right. I mean, it, it's terrific to say that because, you know, if you go back far enough, it was people yeah. like Paul Ferris at 16 and everything um, that set, what the, Steve set the Newcastle oh. record. Sorry? Steve Watson. Steve Watson. Yes, it was Paul Ferris and Steve Watson who were the last two of this very, very, very young age. But you're going way, way back there. Um, mm. But, I mean, you look at that side. You've got a 17-year-old and an 18-year-old. Uh, Livermento is 20. 
I mean, Gordon, who were putting down as a, the experienced superstar, is only what twenty one or something. I mean, he is that. It was an international. Is twenty three. I mean, the side is as young as it's possible to be, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Which is wonderful for the future. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, you know, we tend to forget. You see, under normal circumstances, on age alone, we would say Gordon and Isaac are young. Oh, but they're young, but they're going to be some player sometime. All of a sudden, mm -hmm. they're accepted as stars of a, of a Champions League side. Mm -hmm. But they're still young boys. They're yep. still okay. Absolutely. Okay. I, just yeah. I just want to read this out from Jimmy Wilson before we go to the ads. Hi, Steve. I had the pleasure of meeting Malcolm McDonald in the barracks last night. I have my dad there for his 80th birthday. So I got two oh, programs. Yeah. He says, so I got two programs signed by Malcolm. You would think I gave my dad a million pounds when I gave it to him. So if you could thank Malcolm from my dad and me, I would be very oh. grateful if you could, please. Bless him. They were both so lovely. They really were. Uh, and See, and, that's, and it, it was, that's it was lovely did. to 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 go amongst um, the supporters uh, um, um, after the game, and and everybody was just so bubbling. The atmosphere it was absolutely wonderful. Um, and then I came came away from there and um, was walking along a corridor and who and started to go um, uh, up the stairs. And who should I cross on the stairs but Mike Summerby? Oh, <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yes, yeah. hey, I, I bet you were pleased to see him, Malcolm, with oh, the scoring. Yeah. <laughs> with the scoring. <laughs> but you know the yeah. wonderful and, things? And you know, he didn't go over the top on me. Yeah. It must have been That's... the first time. Yeah, it must have it been was. the first time. Yeah, the first time <laughs> he's never been on the, over the top on me. <laughs> the, the interesting thing, Steve, what you've just said about Malcolm and the, the guy that sent the lovely message in, is that the Newcastle United players that's playing for us now, as we're establishing ourselves as a top, top club, should realise that what they're doing now is so wonderful that there will be a hero here, if not elsewhere, for the rest of their lives. That's what Malcolm McDonald is. That's what Alan Shearer is. That's what Peter Beardsley is. If you're a top player at Newcastle, you've got a job for life with the crowd. And that's what everybody that plays for us last night at AC Milan and against Paris and Germain, that's what it could cement for the rest of your life. And I tell you what, it's worth having. And if you want to speak to anybody to find out if it's worth having, speak to Malcolm McDonald and Alan Shearer. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, we are halfway through the show and it is time for the ads. A big thanks to all our sponsors, Skips and Bins, telephone 0800 25 25 email inquiries at skipsandbins.com, website www.skipsandbins.com, easy contract free and pay-as-you-go waste collection. A big thanks to Mr Vicky's Sources Handmade in Cumbria. You can order yours today by emailing info at mrvickys.co.uk or telephone in 01768 or go to the website, mrvickies.co.uk. A big thanks as well to United Group Travel. They are a UK coach holiday firm based in Morpeth. Uh, for just £30 deposit, you can book a trip uh, across the UK. Uh, there are no strangers on their buses, just friends you haven't met yet. They are taking bookings now for 2024 tours. And you can call them on 01670-632-460 or mobile 0791-666-4174 or 0795714654. one Big thanks to Media Arts for all the help with the video side of things. And a big thanks as well to New Workwear. Uh, you can find them at newworkwear.com. Please subscribe to the channel. All you need to do is hit the subscribe button. It's free. Hit the thumb up under the video to like the video and click share to share to your other social media. We're also available as a podcast on iTunes, Spotify and other podcast providers. If you want to help the channel financially, why not take out a one-off £25 membership? What do you get for your money? You get a scarf, you get a pen, you get a membership card and a cup and you get entry into the monthly draw. How do you do it? Go to nufcmatters.com. If you've got a smartphone, put your smartphone over this QR code and it will take you straight there.
We also support the food bank on this channel. How do we do it? We do it virtually. NUFC fans, foodbank.co.uk is the website. If you want to make a virtual donation today, go to that website and you can top up what they collect at the food bank outside the ground. We always advertise events on this channel as well. If you've got an event to advertise which has got a Newcastle United theme, please let us know. And even with Frank Clark and John Gibson, it takes place at the Irish Centre. Tickets are £15. NUFCmatters.com for your tickets. The Tyne Theatre and Opera House are holding an event with Keegan, Beardsley and Waddle, the class of 84, 25th of January, 2024. And you can book now 0844 249 1000. That's 0844 249 1000. If you go to NUFCmatters.com as well, we've got a couple of raffles ongoing. The Alan Shearer signed ball raffle, a pound a ticket. And the Kieran Trippier picture, a pound a ticket for that as well. And once the tickets are sold, the draw will be done. We've also got some T-shirts, which you can buy. The latest one, the latest hot seller, is this one. Geordie's on tour. I've never seen a Mackham in Milan T-shirt with all of our Champions League fixtures on the back. Get yourself to nufcmatters.com. Buy one today. And don't forget the North East Brecky Show, 7 to 9, Monday to Friday on tuneradio.co.uk. You can also get us on Dab Radio, Smart Speakers, App and Online. Okay, don't forget, Super Mac and Gibbo are at the uh, match day, pre-match talking and post-match talking uh, this weekend at Louis Liquor Store. Uh, you can go up and see the lads. Uh, apparently, it's going very well, chaps, and uh, lots of fans getting in. And don't forget, we are supporting Raval with their NUFC Curry Week. Uh, they are uh, asking us to support it because they are giving um, ch every every ch chicken tikka masala bought at the restaurant. Uh, they are donating the, the the cash equivalent to feeding families. Uh, so uh, you can help them if you want to go and book uh, a curry for uh, National Curry Week, second to the seventh of October. Um, they are offering twenty percent off uh, for Wednesday, the pre-match before the PSG game. Uh, you just need to go to their website. And quote NUFC Matters 2023, uh, which is raval.co.uk, and uh, they will give you 20% off, and you will be helping a very good charity there. So, uh, thanks for inviting us on to get involved, uh, and uh, good luck to everybody who uh, goes along. It's a lovely restaurant. Um, and we're going to move on to the questions now. Uh, Dick, I'm not going to mention your second uh, name. He says, Evening, lads. Did Malcolm ever apply for the manager's job at Newcastle? Perfect timing would have been 1984 when he left Fulham. And Cox left Newcastle at the same time. If not, why not? I, I didn't apply, no. But I was in, under consideration. And what happened was uh, that um, uh, the the uh, uh, the chairman um, he he had his six directors, and he said, "Right, I'm going to ask." For a show of hands, he said, I'm going to put two names forward and you vote for which one you think. And the two names that he put forward was mine and Laurie McMenemy. And there were three votes for me, three votes for Laurie McMenemy. And um, this is as far as I'm aware, as far as I know, um, as I was told. And, um, and so... The, uh, the the chairman said, um, "Right, um, it, it's a, a, a hung board on that. So I'm going to put a third name forward, and I'd like a unanimous vote. And the name is Jack Charlton. And Jack Charlton got the job. Simple as that. Hope that answers your, hope that that answers you. your question. Interesting. Interesting." It is, yeah. Okay, um, I'm going to ask uh, another question. Uh, we'll get through a few of these before we look ahead to the uh, the weekend's game. Um, Alan, I'm not going to answer you if, uh, ask your first question. I'll ask this one, though. Malcolm and John, Man United, City, Liverpool, Arsenal fans say that Eddie Howe will not win anything with Newcastle. They all want him sacked. We need an elite manager. Would you agree? I don't think Alan... I wouldn't say Alan... I mean, if I may say so, we've already got an elite manager. We don't no. need one. We've already got one in the making, which is which is Eddie Howe. I mean, I would like if if Eddie Howe is not going to win something with Newcastle, that must mean he's long odds against doing that. 
I would be down the bookmakers tomorrow morning because I think there's a very, very good chance of that happening. I mean, yes, you can say the two huge managers Newcastle had actually ended up winning nothing, which is Keegan and Robson, who were both revealed mm -hmm. and rightly so because the teams they produced, I mean, finished second top of the uh, Premier League, Keegan, and third top, um, Bobby. And yeah, Bobby and, 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 and both, in and both had their time as an England manager. Ah, in, in 16 matches or in one season in the Champions League when they had double group stages. Mm. So they were stupendous. But Newcastle will win things. Uh, because we lost three games on the trot at the beginning of the season, all of a sudden, before we lost three on the trot, nationally, Eddie was being touted to take over England from Gareth Southgate. And after we lost three on the trot, he was second in the betting with the bookies for being the next Premier League manager to be sacked. I mean, you talk about knee-jerking, no wonder you can hear it on the uh, on the, the show, Steve. You can hear the jerk of the knees. I mean, the, of all the fans. I mean, no. I, I mean, please, do us a favour. I mean, if anybody thinks that we're going to win nothing with Eddie, huh? would you please start to remember people like Joe Kinnear, Steve McLaren and Steve Bruce, who have all served as our manager of recent times. Now, do you want to take a chance on getting one of those uh, to come back and join us and take us beautifully into oblivion? No, uh, thanks. Happy to stick oh, with what we have. And I don't think, John that people fully understand nor give credit to the the unbelievable job that Eddie Howe did at Bournemouth. Oh, massive. On A, getting them up to the uh, up to the premiership and then keeping them there for five seasons. At one time, Malcolm, at one time when you took over the, the Bournemouth job, they had to win some games not to go non-league. Yes, not that's before, right. Because yeah, he took he, over. They, it started in the in in Division Two. Yeah, yes. and, and he took them the right away through the the oh. structure and then into the Premiership, and they were there for five years. My my concern Incredible. is not will we win anything under Eddie Howe, but to make certain we keep Eddie Howe. Because I tell you what, when Gareth Southgate goes, and it'll not be long because he's in that frame of mind now mm. that if they mm. don't win a trophy the next major tournament, what the Euros are, if he doesn't win a trophy, he'll probably say, enough's enough, I've done terrific, I've taken us to right to the brink eh, two or three times, I can't take us any further, I'm now going to bow out. They're going to look, their fate, for a New England manager who is a bright young man and he happens to be English, and he happens to be a sort of FA man. You can see Eddie handling the FA well, where you couldn't see Brian Clough handling the FA well. I mean, when I say he's an FA man, I, I, I'm saying it as a compliment to Eddie. He, he's a diplomat. You can see him handling the FA well. You could never see Cluffy handling the FA well. You could never see Sam Allardyce handling the FA well. But you could see Eddie Howe. So I think our problem is to make certain we're keeping. Not to find... A, a, what if we? You see, this is what clubs do. They think, we'll chase an elitist manager who will take us to the next level. Well, are we going to learn from Tottenham, who took Jose Mourinho and then took Conte? And where did they take him? <laughs> where did those two managers take Spurs? In the Never Never Land. Never going to win anything land. And they, that's what the, the Greek Aussie is going to bring them out of. The hope, they hope, yeah. in the next few seasons. But what is an elite manager? I tell you what, Spurs didn't find Mourinho or Conte the answer to their problems, did they? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, John. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we've got 15 minutes left of the show. Um, let's pick one more question. Uh, John says, uh, do you think Pep is interested in taking Bruno to Manchester City? I know why he's asking that, by the way, because Pep went straight on the pitch and put his arm around Bruno at the final whistle and started mm. whispering in his ear. And I thought, yeah, I thought this, this 
little so and so is not blowing kisses at him. He's saying, <laughs> "Can I confirm with you? It's a hundred million pound. Your your uh, sellout clause for your new contract." Pep is Pep is a very clever boy. I mean, do you? Yes, really isn't it? That might be the tap tap tapping that you keep hearing, Steve. Absolutely, mate. Absolutely. Because what happens? What happens? This guy, maybe, when he goes on at the end of a game, have you noticed how often Pep goes over to one of the other team? Yes. And gives somebody a big kiss because he's saying, "How would you like to come to Manchester City?" Mm. But yeah, and just feeding it into their head. <laughs> oh, without without a shadow of doubt. I mean, yeah. I think that should have been the second book and then the sending off. Mm. Yeah, mm. yeah, no, no, no doubt about it. Okay, Newcastle United um, are back in action uh, this weekend, and it's uh, wow, a three o'clock kickoff on a Saturday, uh, which is which is strange. Uh, to, 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 oh, to, isn't it? And, and no television. No, no TV. Well, no, that's no, why no. it's three o'clock on a Saturday, of course. Yeah. Had there been television, it couldn't have been. So, so Gibbo, in your uh, in your um, in your job with with, with the Chronicle, um, you you do get a little um, a little bit of a whisper. Um, the big concern is the injuries. Um, we know that there was going to be squad rotation last night. Uh, obviously, ten changes to Newcastle's team. Uh, Callum Wilson wasn't in the squad. Um, Problem potentially with a with his hamstring, just a little strain. Botman, we know there was mention of potential knee issue. Dan Byrne and Dubravka weren't available because they were ill. Ill. Um, yeah. Isaac, of course, came off. Um, went on to Sky after the game uh, and basically said that um, he should be okay. Um, he, he didn't seem concerned at all. Um, so, so yeah, is there an injury update from you, John? Is what I'm fishing for before the press conference tomorrow because we'll probably get more from you. Then we'll get from Eddie Howe. You won't get a yeah. lot from Eddie. I mean, that's the biggest certainty is you won't get a lot from Eddie. Uh, you'll get, we have one or two knocks, but we're, we're hoping everybody comes through. How's Joe Bloggs? Well, I'll see what he's like today when we train, etc., etc. Et we all go home <clears throat> and we know no more than we did before the press conference started. And I mean, when we got this team, we had no idea, did we, that a couple of them were ill and that a couple of them said, no, actually, we, we could have known Callum had a knock because that's compulsory every every second or third game, bless him. He, he has a knock because that's the way, that showbiz, that's the way it goes. And no, I what we do know is from the inside is that none of those are serious. Um and, and by the way, Joe Linton, as I said earlier on this podcast, wasn't coming back after the national, but I'm certain I saw him last night. Or it might have been yeah. Grace Bonham, but I'm certain it was him. I don't know. I'm pretty certain it was him. Uh, but we're not going to know. But I think they'll all be in contention again. And you know what we could get? Ten changes. Because the ten changes we got against Manchester City, all of them could be not starting again, we could almost flip back to what we are. They'll spread the load. They'll, he's got to win this and he'll put out a team to win this and I believe they will win this but there will be an eye on, on Paris Saint-Germain as well. Um, I, ex I think that Botman and Wilson and um, with, an in with an illness you're not quite certain uh, about Byrne and Jabulka, but with respect to both of them that's less important than it is that you get Botman and Wilson, etc., and Isaac available. That's more important than uh, Dubrovka and um, and Burn, I would think. But I was I would expect everybody that got a roll call last night to be available for Saturday mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and want to be. Oh yeah. yes, absolutely. Yeah, they absolutely. Will want to be available. If there was a match to 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 miss, it was Manchester City because a few of them privately might have thought, "Well, we'll get tucked up anyway." So yeah. I don't mind missing a League Cup tie against Manchester City, but I often want to play against Burnley so I can make me mark to play against Paris Saint Germain sure. because that is the showpiece game, isn't it? Twenty years of waiting for the Champions League. We've had Barcelona, we've had Juventus, we've had Inter Milan, 
We're now going to have Paris Saint-Germain with the greatest player in the world playing for them and the group favourites at St. James's Park to welcome the Champions League back. You want to play in that, don't you? So okay. you might have to play against Burnley to make your mark to play in that. So yeah. I think they'll all get off their bed and nails and be able to walk by uh, Saturday morning. <laughs> okay, well, injury news at, uh, at Burnley. Uh, Lyle Foster suspended. Uh, Halsmar, Ekdal, Johan Goodmanson, Michael Oberfemi and Benson and Dago Cherlinov are all on the injury list uh, ahead of the, the visit to Tyneside. Um, they did have a result uh, in the Carabao Cup, of course. They travelled to Salford City. And no, they ran Salford, out... not Manchester City. It's Salford City. It was a different city. It was. They ran out 4-0 winners. Um, but it's been a bad return to the Premier League for Vincent Company and Burnley. In fact, it's been a bad return for every single club that came up from the Championship. They haven't yeah. actually won a, they haven't yeah. won a game between them. Um, <laughs> but Burnley uh, have got a solitary point. Uh, that came from a 1-1 draw in Nottingham Forest. Uh, that has been their only Premier League away game uh, to mm. date. So this is their second. They have had home games against Man City, Aston Villa, Spurs, I think Manchester United. All, all three that came up, Steve, uh, uh, they're all on one point, aren't they? they yeah. They've all just had that single draw. Yeah, and it's not not good in, at all. In all honesty, I, I'm I'm strongly getting the impression that the gap between the Premiership and the Championship is widening um and i don't think the championship's going backwards i think the premier league is is, is moving on it's uh, it's why it's widening malcolm because the evidence as you rightly say the evidence is burnley they strolled the championship last season they were yes. champions by a distance they strolled the championship and they've got one point this season so far They've lost four successive home games. If I was Burnley, if I was Vincent Company, I would be worried because they might have got a point away. It's it, it for us. But if you're going to stay up as a newly promoted side, you normally stay up because of your home form. They've, right. played, yeah. they've played four, four turf more and lost four. So, you know, they, they come up here in a bit of a problem. By the way, I would just like to mention before we go on to our each of our prophecies that if we have mad dog uh, on a leash tied to the side of the dugout for it with eddie then they're gonna need a double leash to take care of craig bellamy on there when he when he comes oh, up I... he'll out he'll outdo the mad dog will craig i mean he's, he's the, tie the chairs <laughs> down tie the chairs down if we remember i was going to say he's a fellow that heaved the chair john carver who spent half the time trying to grapple with Graham Souness and took a golf club to a, a, a teammate at Liverpool. So, I mean, he, he is a bit of a wild child. Having said that, in all fairness to him, Carver become a dear friend of his, you know, uh, John in him, despite what happened with the, the chair flying past John's head and, and Bobby Robson having to be the peacemaker. And he's a very thoughtful now, a very thoughtful and innovative coach, so you know he's he's probably reformed character. But we remember him as the firebrand that played with Alan Shearer. He'll be coming back here, so there's him on one side of company, and there's Mad Dog on the other side of Eddie. So it should be a lot of fun, and um, hopefully it's going to be a lot more fun for us than them. And I, I thoroughly believe it will be. Okay, um, Malcolm, I'm going to come to you first for for your prediction for the game at the weekend, first and foremost. Well, um, I I have a feeling that uh, uh, that Newcastle are going to score quite a few goals uh, again, similarly to uh, last uh, Saturday, and um, well, how many? Who knows? I'm, I'm, I'll take I'll take a um, a, a, a three nil score line um, and. Uh, I, I am that Burnley have got have got nobody up front to score goals at all. They've got wingers that play uh, that, that 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 are quick, but, but we've got fullbacks to deal with that. So um, uh, uh, yeah, I think it's a question of, of just how many we're going to score. In all honesty, 
interesting really? interesting point malcolm because earlier today i was asked in my job for a prediction uh, on this match and i went on record as saying newcastle to win three nil which is exactly what you've right said right. There. and then um, i do believe we will i mean we must we lost three premier league games we're still playing catch up in the premier league and the premier league is vitally important because if we want to qualify for the champions league next season we've got to get in the top four because we're not going to or at least the top five because it might be five next year but we're not going to qualify for the Champions League by winning the Champions League this season. Even I, with my jolly hat jauntily at an angle, doesn't expect us to win the Champions League this season. So we, uh, so we're playing catch up. Having lost three champ, uh, Premier League games on the trot, we've got to win three on the trot. We've already won two in um, Brentford and Sheffield United. So we've got to complete the third one by winning against Burnley it will also set us up magnificently for Paris Saint-Germain and the return of Champions League to St James's Park because we'll have had this fabulous run of beating Brentford beating Sheffield Wednesday mm -hmm. gone with uh, with AC Milan knocking the European champions out we've got to beat Burnley it's unthinkable not to we don't want our balloon pricked before we go and play Paris Saint Germain. Absolutely, we don't. Yeah. And by everything that's saying, it won't happen. So I'm going for exactly the same scoreline as Malcolm 3 0. What about you, Steve? And I'm going to go 3 0 as well, lads. Yeah, yeah, that's what I like to hear. I am confident. I am confident. Teamwork. Teamwork. I, did, I did get the Man City game right. I predicted 1 0. So yeah. I'm. I, I've got my me mystic, me mystic mega abilities at the moment. I'm going to move on to the PSG game because that will be played before we uh, gather again on this platform. So, John, I'll give you the first shout at that. So, PSG, Kylian Mbappe uh, coming to tune. Uh, you've already uh, explained how exciting this is going to be. This is the one to be at if you're a Newcastle fabulous, fan. Fabulous night. Um, I tell you what, the way things have gone for us now, um, and I wonder about them, They've got so close so often. They've had all the world's great players play for them, like Neymar and Messi and Mbappe and Ronaldinho in the past and Abramovich, the Swedish guy in the past. They've had them all play for them. Uh, but they've got the one, one Champions League final. I'm not certain that things have not just gone a little bit sort of flat. Mbappe wants to go to Real Madrid desperately at the end of this season, etc., etc. If we get the result against Burnley, sorry, correction, when we get the result against Burnley, so we are in the right frame of mind, I tell you what, we'll fancy it more than they fancy it. We'll fancy it at St. James's. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah absolutely, John, because that... They'll look at Newcastle's recent form, haven't let in a goal, scored eight in one game, beat yes. the, uh, the European champions. Uh, oh, I mean, yeah, absolutely they, right. They and know I tell, that they're in for a game. I tell you what, Malcolm, as well, when we start in the 50,000 with all the flags setting all the emotion and doing all the, that we do do, and if we get... Whoever's playing, be it Isaac or Anthony Gordon, who can be a nasty little article on the pitch, a lovely lad, but a nasty little article, I mean, that is a big plus to us. When we get a few of them in the first 10 minutes, rattling a few cages, let's say my puppy's come with his ankle strapped after the injury he's just had, and he, he gets a little uh, jolly kiss, shall we say, from the um, challenge of Bruno or or J Big Joe Linton, who, um, I mean, half the aggression he produces is because he can't tackle. He tries to, but it's all mistimed because he's a centre forward. So he he, <laughs> he he starts his tackle in St James's Park and it ends up at the other side of the Tyne Bridge um, because he just slides everybody into oblivion. If we hit them physically early doors, how much will they fancy it? How much will yeah. they think? Look at all the money I've got in the bank. Do I really need to go at these mad Geordies and take them on when they've obviously been eating raw steaks? So, um, 
I think we will provide a little bit of a shock for them, providing we get the right result against Burnley, and I'm certain we will. Yeah, yeah. And after what happened last night, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna take us to to nick the game one nil. It would be a nick uh, because it'll be close. There's absolutely yeah, no it'll be question. Really, about really that. close and very tight. But I so. don't I don't care what the score is as long as we win. I don't yeah. care what, because I, if we are gonna get if we are gonna get out of this group, guys, and it was called the group of death, not by us, by other people when it was mm. made because we were in the fourth pot. If we are going to get out of this group, we're going to get out because of our home results. We've got a wonderful result yeah. at AC Milan, but it's our home results that are going to get us out. This is our first home game. Let's get right at them and see how much they like it on a naughty night. I hope it's raining. And on a naughty night at St. James's Park, let's see how much they like it. Okay, interesting. Well, it's all very positive, guys. Uh, it's a positive show. I'm going to go. I'm going to go for Newcastle and nick it one nil against PSG as well to round off another another great week. So uh, fingers crossed, uh, our predictions come true. Uh, we will be back tomorrow night, five o'clock. The three amigos, uh, two hours, uh, of course. Looking forward to seeing the lads then. But for now, Gibbo, Malcolm, have a good weekend. Great to have you on as always. Take care, lads. Take care, Take guys. Care, everybody. See you, boys. Thank you.